Welcome to part 2 of Dredrick's Majin Guide, where it's all about the combos. We'll start with an overview of the basics, and then move on to some advanced techniques that you can use to send your opponents flying. There are four basic combos that you'll be learning in this video. First up is the full square combo. The full square combo is the easiest combo to execute and the first one listed on your screen. To perform the full square combo, you need only push the square button nine times. The full square combo starts by attacking your opponent four times with punches for low damage. The next two attacks, you spin, knocking your opponent up a little, and then kick them away. After that, your last three punches vanish, make you appear in front of your opponent while they're being knocked away from you, and then you hit them once and knock them down to the ground, which ends the combo. The full square combo can be very useful for setting up certain stamina breaks or to land other super ultimate skills, however it has a very large weakness right now. Depending on your connection to your opponent, very often the vanish in the combo doesn't work correctly, and you teleport to the wrong spot only to watch your opponent fly safely away from you. Because of this, I generally avoid the full square combo in favor of more reliable combo strings. However, if this is fixed in a later version of the game, then the full square combo will become a much more important staple of Majin play. Finally of note about the full square combo is that you can guard cancel it, and if you want, you can even infinitely loop it. But the damage that this does is very small, and so it is not recommended. Next is the heavy combo. The heavy combo consists of four heavy attacks that ends with a knockback on your opponent. The heavy combo is not generally very useful, however you can cancel out of it at any point in time by pushing square, uh, which will move you back into the full combos. Next we have the knockdown combo. To perform the knockdown combo, you start with the full square combo, but at any time before the fifth square, you switch to heavy attacks. This means you do anywhere between 1 and 4 light punches, and then you knock your opponent in the air and finally butt stomp them to the ground. The combo is useful in two situations. Placing your opponent on the ground can allow you to quickly land a super move, or after a stamina break, it can guarantee an ultimate attack such as Kamehameha will land. Secondly, if your opponent incorrectly vanishes before the stomp, it will track the vanish and follow them behind you. The timing on this must be very specific, but if used correctly, it can result in wasting two bars of your opponent's stamina. Finally, we have the full combo. I call this the full combo because it's the longest and most damaging basic combo. This is the best and most common combo string that you will be using as a Majin. The full combo begins with the full square combo, however instead of kicking your opponent away with the sixth attack, you use heavy hand attacks that deal high damage and end with a powerful knockdown. Now there is one weakness of the full combo. The final knockdown hit is sometimes inconsistent and your opponent can roll out of it, avoiding the damage entirely. This is why you will usually not finish the full combo, instead opting to use a super skill before it's complete to maximize your damage output. Okay. So now you understand the basics of the full combo, it's time to learn how to combo it into skills. Unlike Xenoverse 1, the emphasis on infinite melee combos is gone now, so we need to start using our skills to finish attacks. This will give you the maximum damage output for your combos. There are two ways to finish the full combo. One is the knockdown, which you can follow up with attacks such as Kamehameha or Death Beam. And the other is mid-combo, where you can stop the attack early to land a skill such as Super Dragon Fist. Now we're going to review the correct and incorrect timings to use different skills. Some attacks, such as Death Beam, are very quick and can be used at almost any point. In this example, however, we're going to use Super Dragon Fist, as it is a slow but powerful skill. I'll be talking about when to use these skills during the four triangle hits of the full combo. In this first clip, I use Super Dragon Fist after the third triangle hit. This is the last chance to use a skill before a knockdown. As you can see, my opponent rolls out of the hit. This is because there's a larger period of time after this hit before you can act again. You'll sometimes land this attack against larger characters, but it is inconsistent. In this next clip, I use Super Dragon Fist after the first triangle hit. The overall damage is lower, but the attack lands consistently, and we're able to follow up with the subsequent skill. I use Death Beam in this clip. This is why for slower attacks, in the full combo after the first triangle hit, 
is usually the best place to activate that skill to ensure that it lands. Before we continue, I should point out that most of the time you see me doing a full combo, it doesn't do the five starting punches. Well, that's because when you're flying or doing a step vanish, the next attack you do changes. If you push square, it becomes a headbutt that puts you at the fourth punch of the full combo. If you push triangle, it performs a kick that does a knockback. Alternatively, after the headbutt, you can switch immediately into triangle attacks to start a fresh heavy combo if you want a longer combo string. Now we're getting into the advanced combos. The next thing on the list is stamina breaks. There are about four different stamina breaks that you can do with the Majin, but I'm only going to teach you one in this video. Now don't worry, this one's plenty good to start your Majin career. To perform a stamina break, all you need to do is push the stick towards your opponent and then push triangle or square. The stamina break in this video will feature the square variety. To perform this stamina break, you do the full combo, and then immediately after you do the spin attack, you do the stamina break. If your opponent doesn't vanish the attack, they will be unable to evade whatever combo you choose to do over the next few seconds. Now pay attention to how much stamina they have, because if it's a low amount, then their stamina will come back very quickly, so you have to act fast. It's time to put everything you've learned together, and for me to teach you one of my absolute favorite advanced combos from the beta. You start with the full combo, and then after the knockdown, you go into Super Dragon Fist. Once they're on the ground, you perform a grab, throwing them behind you, and finish with a death beam. This is an effective, high damage combo that's difficult to stop once it gets rolling. There are many variations on this combo, such as using the Super Dragon Fist after the first triangle, which is the more consistent variation, or if you aren't close enough to grab, you can skip that and go straight into the death beam. No matter which version you use, however, stringing together these abilities puts your opponent in a world of hurt that they won't soon forget. And that's the end of the combo video. You can take and expand what you've learned today to create a Majin style all of your own. Stay tuned for the third video in this series where we're going to learn advanced strategies for stamina management or specific matchups, as well as future videos where I'll be teaching you all the Majin details that we've learned in the full game. This has been Dredrick's Majin Guide. Thanks for watching.